Hey everyone, this is my reaction to the new House of the Dragon Season 2 trailer, the six new character posters, and some of the high-resolution still images that were released leading up to the highly anticipated Season 2 premiere in June of 2024. It's been well over three months since we've had anything from HBO when they released a teaser and some posters back in early December. I have a House of the Dragon Season 2 teaser reaction video. If you want to check it out, I'll leave that in the pinned comment. Now, you'll likely know Irish costume designer Caroline McCall, new in Season 2, from her previous work on Downton Abbey and His Dark Materials. In scrubbing through IMDb, some of the creatives from Season 1, such as Chief Embroiderer Michelle Carragher and Costume Effects Supervisor Simon Brindle, who is behind the armor, have returned for Season 2. However, McCall has brought on a new creative team, which is not uncommon for a designer to work with colleagues that they are familiar with. Now, before I dig into the most striking observations that I've made, let me give you my overall thoughts first. One noticeable improvement, as seen in the posters, a step up from Season 1, is the excellent fit of the costumes. I appreciate the lack of any noticeable flaws, such as odd dents and gapes, and the appearance of modern undergarments like strapless bras. The fabrics in Season 2 have more gravitas in keeping with the Targaryen dynasty and are not only beautiful, but they tell the story of the characters. Additionally, there is a balance between the trims, embroideries, fasteners, and jewelry. Some of the costumes from Season 1, as I've highlighted in other videos, did display this kind of symmetry at times, but I think to a lesser extent. To be fair, in Season 2, McCall has an easier time of it because she is coming in after the world of House of the Dragon, set nearly 200 years before the events of Game of Thrones, is already established by the showrunner and the design team. She has an arsenal of costumes and accessories already at her disposal, and she doesn't have to reinvent the wheel where some of the previously established costumes are concerned, such as the armors worn by the Kingsguard, the gold cloaks, Daemon Targaryen, along with the royal crowns and many of the weapons. With these essential foundations in place, McCall has the freedom to introduce novel concepts while remaining faithful to the established styles of the series. As well, the costumes as depicted in the Season 2 promotional material feel in-universe for Game of Thrones. While it is a prequel to the original series, you can see the connection to their ancestry, to Daenerys Targaryen and her kin, as established by series costume designer Michelle Clapton. Now let's dig in a little deeper into the two factions, starting with the Blacks. There's likely no surprise here that the dominant color of the Blacks is, well, the color black. However, as the house sigil of a red three-headed dragon breathing red flame on a black field, we get variations of the colors— such as dark rose, burgundy, charcoal gray, etc. McCall leans in hard to the scaly dragon textures on both Rhaenyra and Daemon Targaryen. Daemon's longline doublet, as depicted in the poster, has an abundance of texture. It's a lovely patinated black leather for sure, but then there are some additions of croc and leather epaulets. McCall has kept the same silhouette established in Season 1, and he is festooned with his belt and sword belt housing Dark Sister. There's no abandoning that. As I mentioned earlier, the balance was off a little bit for me in Season 1, but I love the heavier-weighted fasteners that close Damon's coat and that they put a little bit of red suede behind it. Rhaenyra looks queenly in a body-hugging scaly black gown. Gone in her costumes are the darts, the seeming so flawless you can barely tell how the gown was put together as she appears to look like she was dipped into the black dragon scale, which is a protective shell against the traumas she has already endured. While they might have sourced the fabric, I do wonder if they 3D printed it specially for the show. This costume looks heavily inspired by Daenerys' arrival at Dragonstone costume. In fact, there's moments in the trailer where Rhaenyra is walking with her back to the camera that you would be hard-pressed not to think it was Danny. On her embroidered shoulders are some large metal scales, possibly meant to represent the vertebrae of the dragon, and I think this sort of ties into her pendant necklace. 
I have a small quibble about the inner collar, and it is really small, is that it doesn't sit nicely against your neck as you would expect a Japanese collar to do. Now, Corley's has a much more vivid nautical blue costume this season with loads of texture, although it's still in keeping with his season one silhouette. And I should mention that at this point that the wigs, most notably the white wigs worn by the Valarians, are so much better than last season. They don't sit as high on the head, creating that mop-like feature as they did before. So cheers to the wig department. One thing you might not have noticed is that Corlys is wearing the Hand of the Queen brooch in silver, the predominant metal of the Black Faction. And you might recall that Daenerys Targaryen gifted Tyrion Lannister with a very similar brooch. I also wanted to call attention to Jace, who appears to have ditched his wig this season. I love his costume worn at the funeral, which is a departure from this party-colored quilted doublets that were worn in Season 2. His look, of course, appears to be a callback to Danny's brothers Viserys and Rhaegar Targaryen. There are lots of lovely details, including the penannular brooch fastening his cloak into place. And I won't be surprised if there's a giant dragon crest on the front of his doublet. If you enjoy this kind of content, consider subscribing to my channel, or if you'd like to support the channel in a more meaningful way, I've set up a Patreon with tiers that offer perks. You can find the link in my description. Now let's talk about the greens. The palette of the greens, for all intents and purposes, are green. The servants are dressed in green as well. But within that palette, there are a multitude of variations like peacock, emerald, forest, and moss greens. When the designers veer into almost black even, as we see with Alicent and Helena at the funeral procession, it doesn't quite make it. As a viewer, you might find that all a bit of a bore, and I might tend to agree with you because there is nowhere to go from here. Alicent has the world on her shoulders, dressed in weighty velvets and brocades. Now, I might be going out on a limb here, but her green gown, as depicted in the poster, with its intricate embroidery and crystals, appears to be a callback to Marjorie Terrell's purple wedding gown in her marriage to Joffrey Baratheon. Marjorie's mother, in the books at least, was a leery Hightower. However, instead of the thorny rose canes in 20 Marjorie's gown, the subtle detail on Alison's gown appears to be more web-like, bringing to mind Sir Walter Scott's epic poem, Marmion, A Tale of Flawed and Field, that features the phrase, Oh, what a tangle web we weave, when first we practice to deceive. In juxtaposition to Rhaenyra, the trim and embroideries on most of her gowns are gold. I love Alison's tiara with the green gems. I prefer the lightness of that compared to the padded crescent roll headdresses that she wore in season one. And I'm not sure what underpinnings are used, but it does appear that in Helena's case, at least, there might be some modern understructures, or perhaps they've built them into their costumes. Now, one exception to the Green Faction's palette is Aegon's lovely embroidered black doublet. Here he's dressed very much like Viserys early in season one and holding the dragon's paw dagger. Like with his other costumes, embellished with his golden mount sunfire, you might notice the two heads of the dragon on his stand-up collar. This style of stumpwork embroidery was featured on Cersei and Sansa's costumes, among others, in Game of Thrones. And in the trailer, we see Aegon dressing in his armor. This might be nothing, but the chevron pattern on Aegon's cuirass brought to mind Loras Tyrell's green arming doublet. As you likely recall, green was also the dominant color of House Tyrell. And if you look closely, you will also see the metal scales on the sleeves of Aegon's gambeson. Now, one thing that caught my eye was his helm, which features Aegon the Conqueror's crown. The barbute-shaped helm is similar to the shape of those worn by the Targaryen king's guard, such as Sir Arthur Dane. According to historic royal palaces, in the 14th century, it was common to see kings wear a crown on their great helms so that they could be readily recognized by their soldiers on the battlefield, as seen depicted in these 13th and 14th century paintings. Both Edward III of England and Robert the Bruce of Scotland seals featured them mounted with great helms with crowns. And here's an example, a rare example, of a crowned helm circa 1540 attributed to Swedish King Gustav Vasa. I'd mentioned the Hand of the King chain of office worn by Sir Kristen Cole on his armor in my last video, 
And you can see it here again in the trailer. But it's also interesting to note that Allison's father, Otto Hightower, is also wearing the Hand of the King brooch, even if it's short-lived, as he bows to Aegon in the throne room. And while I'm on the topic of Kristen, while we don't see it in the trailers or pictures, I wonder if they plan on a redesign of the White Cloak's armor. I bring this to your attention because under each new king or queen in Game of Thrones, they often adopt a new look. Between Robert, Joffrey, and Tom and Reigns, the change was rather subtle, but then there was a very dramatic change during Cersei's power grab. I expect the armor to incorporate Aegon's personal sigil of a golden three-headed dragon breathing gold flames on black. Otto's son Gawain Hightower is featured very prominently in the trailer. This armor is quite the glow-up compared to his rook chest piece armor worn at King Viserys' tournament in Season 1. In Season 2, he's wearing a beautiful green velvet brigandine and plate armor worn over mail and a bassinet with some decorative bands akin to the King's Guard armor. The house sigil of a white stone watchtower crowned with green flame as depicted in the show is featured prominently on his helmet and gorget. The sigil is also featured on the high tower men at arms, like the one standing behind Allison and Helena at the funeral. And this might just be me, but at first glance, I thought that the high tower sigil looked like the dragon emoji. Now, my one small quibble here, as one of my viewers pointed out, is that his gorget and pauldrons are a tad undersized, so they are butting up against each other. And while I didn't notice that Lara Strong is in the trailer, in a still image released by HBO, he's dressed as per season one in purples. Now, as an outlier, I don't anticipate seeing Laris moving into the green anytime soon, as he has his own agenda. So I'll have more House of the Dragon videos coming your way. In the meantime, I have a video on the Targaryen and Valarian rings featured in season one of House of the Dragon, created by jewelry designer Jessica DeLotz. And in case you didn't notice, Daemon Targaryen's house sigil ring created by Jessica is prominently featured in the Season 2 poster. Thank you for spending time with me. I'll see you in the next video.